So in this video, we're talking about different types of columns in Smartsheet. You're gonna use this all the time if you're a new user, if you're an advanced user. So let's look at some of the different types of columns and some of their different functionality. So the first type of column, the default type of column that you're gonna find when you create a new column uh, on your sheet, which the way to do that is we're just right clicking and then we can insert column left or column right. Uh, when you do that, you're gonna get a new column and the first thing it's gonna ask you for is a name. Then you can see the column type that defaults in is text or number. This is the one you're gonna use most of the time uh, for any just generic information that needs to go in. But let's look at the other column types uh, and see what kind of options we have. We have a drop down list. So that's exactly what it says. We can have a, a drop down on any one of our columns where we can uh, input the values that we want users to have access to. We can restrict the drop down to just those values, and we can allow multiple values in each cell. Now, if we leave these open, um, they can only enter in one thing in the cell, and they can also type in values that don't yet exist in the dropdown. Our next one is a date. Pretty straightforward. It's just a date. Uh, you can restrict it to dates only, or if you leave this off, then they can actually enter in text as well as dates in that column. That does get a little messy whenever you try and work with, uh, with column formulas or formulas that relate to this column. So typically, if you've got a column that is supposed to be a date, then you want to turn this on or restrict it to dates only. Then we have a contact list column. So a contact lists are just folks that, have, that are in your Smartsheet account, or there are people with outside of your Smartsheet account, but you can indicate their name and their email address, and they turn it into a contact in that column. What that means is then you can use automations to send them email notifications or approval steps, um, it's a little bit more functionality than just having their name or email address listed in the text. Again, this one's the same thing. You can allow multiple contacts per cell. Uh, you can restrict it to the values that only you specify in the contacts list here. Our next column type is checkbox. So our checkbox also has different symbols. So it's not just a checkbox. It could also be a red flag. It could be a star on or a star off. And again, you can restrict its use only to these symbols that you specify. Otherwise, they can enter text in that field as well. Some additional symbols we have. Uh, so you'll see these a lot of times. We talk about these in the community a lot. It's uh, our red, yellow, green, blue, or gray indicators. Um, we also have some red, yellow, green indicators that look a little different. Uh, some different arrows. Uh, I like using these pie charts for completion statuses. We also have this, which is a, uh, it's basically a meter of a completion status. So you can thumb through the rest of these and uh, see what they're really useful for. Uh, these guys down here at the bottom are really fun. They're, they're your happiness symbols. So again, we've got, a, we've got a, the ability to restrict this column to only the values that you specify. Otherwise, folks can enter in text in those columns. The auto number column, is just a column that Smartsheet creates and it will auto number every row in your sheet. This is really helpful whenever you need row numbers in your sheet that are different from the row numbers that you see on the left-hand side of the sheet. We can, we can include prefixes and suffixes with these. So if for whatever reason you needed to include row dash and then the number, you can do that here on the prefix. Or if you need something on the end, you use the suffix. And then also we can specify numerical places and starting numbers. What's nice, it gives you a little preview down here at the bottom. So if I play with this numerical places, we can see what my different uh, numbers are gonna be. So after the auto number, we have the created by. So this is an auto-generated column as well um, that specifies the account of the person that created the row. So if they submit something, if they submit a new row through the form, it's going to show that that it was submitted through the form. Um, unless they're logged in and they submit it through the form, then it'll capture their email address for you. Otherwise, it's going to show you the email address of the person uh, that created this row manually in the sheet. The created date column is also an auto-generated column. This is just simply a date that, uh, that the row was created. We also have a latest comment column here. Obviously, we don't have any comments on the row, so there's no point in showing that latest comment. But you can actually insert a column that shows the latest comment that was left on the row in that column. The modified by is very similar to the created by. It's just who modified the row last, and then also the modified date. 
is the date and time that the row was modified last as well. Uh, the modified date and time is going to constantly update no matter what was updated on the row. So just keep that in mind. So those are your different column types. Uh, again, we just simply right click and insert column left or column right. Some of the other options we have for columns is we can delete columns, we can rename them, we can add a column description. This one's really nice if you have a lot of columns that uh, you need to explain to other folks uh, what the purpose of that column is. Um, and then also if you need to include any certain uh, descriptors around the formatting of that column. So for instance, in this column description, I can include, um, if I could spell, company's phone number here in the format of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And so when I include this description, then you'll see it show up as a tooltip underneath this column. So see that little icon that popped up? So if the user hovers over that icon, it'll show them that tooltip, that same column description that we just typed in. Uh, column descriptions are limited to 250 characters, so just keep that in mind. We can also, from this position, from right-clicking on the column, we can filter, we can sort by rows, uh, we can sort our rows, we can lock this column. So if you're an administrator of your sheet, then you can lock this column down so that editors and viewers can't change anything about the, about the column. Uh, editors can still change the content within the column, but they can't do anything with the column itself. So they can't change the description or anything like that. Uh, we can freeze the column, just like we can in Excel, how you can freeze certain columns and as you scroll to the right and the left, uh, the, the entire screen will not scroll. It'll freeze that one section, which is really helpful if you have a lot of data from right to left. And then also we can hide the column as well. Uh, if we have a Gantt chart on our sheet, we can show the Gantt chart here. There are project settings. Uh, this has nothing to do with the column. And then the, the column properties just brings up that same, uh, that same, structure that we saw whenever you just double clicked on the column itself. One last thing about columns is that we can, um, we can change the sequence of our column. So let's say if we didn't want our phone number here, we can actually move this phone number column over past the indicator. And all it is is just clicking, holding down your mouse, dragging, and then moving it wherever you wanted it to go. So that's kind of a quick deep dive on columns. Uh, if you have any questions about columns, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Uh, if you liked this video, feel free to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.